Yeah, green thingy, thingamabob. Oh, what the hell? Welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Thousand One Games. I'm your host, Gaming J, and today we're hopping into Ratchet and Clank Future: Colon Tools of Destruction. Boy, what a what a mouthful of a of a title that is! I can't even talk after saying the title. I'm like tripping over the following word: Ratchet and Clank Future: Tools of Destruction. This is the first installment of Ratchet and Clank for the PS3, and it is the first one that we are playing. Um, I actually personally, by the way, always confuse Ratchet and Clank with Jack and Dexter. They're kind of similar games, I think. Um, needs to perform initial setup, 95 to 100 seconds. Okay, well, we got time, guys. Um, yeah, Jack and Dexter, it kind of reminds me a bit of Ratchet and Clank. And actually, apparently, I'm not crazy here. So apparently Insomniac Games, who created uh, Ratchet and Clank here, borrowed Naughty Dog's Jack and Daxter engine and the control scheme to make this game. So I'm not crazy. I'm not crazy. But uh, I always kind of get them confused. Uh, we're just wa we're literally just watching two gears spinning here. Let, let me cut ahead to something more interesting for you guys. All right. Setup has been completed. Boy, do I miss the days when you could just insert a disc into a game system and know that you'd be able to play. Um, I guess it's not the worst thing in the world to have an install process. I mean, that didn't take all that long, but aren't install times kind of annoying? You know, the worst is when you buy a game and you put it in on day one and there's a patch. There's a patch on day one. Why don't I just wait and, and, and put it, you know, release a game a week later and include the patch on the disc? I don't know. I guess they're still fixing things after the game has been uh, gold and they're printing it in the factory, which is good. It's good. They're still fixing things, but uh, day one patches, definitely kind of annoying. Anyway, let's go ahead and start a new game, Ratchet and Clank. Create a new save game. Let's do it. Now, uh, I've never played Ratchet and Clank before. Actually, that's not entirely true. I think I've played one of the Ratchet and Clanks on the PS4. Um, so I've played a little bit of Ratchet and Clank. Again, I always confuse it with Jack and Daxter, even though I've only ever played, like, one Jack and Daxter game, and it was for this series. So, uh, anyway. Here's, um, Clank. He's a little robot. And there's, uh, Ratchet. I keep wanting to call him Daxter. Uh, if I get confused midway through this video and start calling them Jack and Daxter, guys, just, uh, <clears throat> just, just bear with me. Know that I'm just, uh, just a little distracted as I'm trying to talk and play at the same time. Um, I think the PlayStation 4 game I played, by the way, was like a, a backstory, like a, a either a remake of the original or something like that, because I think I saw how Clank originally met up with, uh, with, uh, what's his face here, Ratchet. But I figured, hey, if you were in the neighborhood, maybe. He's, that, now that guy's some kind of, like, comical... He's kind of like a superhero that everyone looks up to, but he's a bit of a fraud, apparently. So uh, I guess we're going to go and try and uh, try and save him here. Now, this is one of the first PS3 games. I don't know if it's the first, but it's one of the first PS3 games. Oh, that, uh, our invention there did not work very well. This would be a great time to allow the player to have some control over the gameplay. Nope. Okay, it was too exciting for us. We just got to watch it instead. Eventually, they'll let us play. You know, this would be a fun thing to play through, I guess, but uh, we'll, we'll just watch it instead. Um, so I don't know if this is the first... I can't say definitively that it's the first game to ever use the uh, DualShock 3 Rumble feature in the PlayStation 3's controller, but it definitely is one of the first. So there you go. So I'm excited to feel my controller rumble. So far it hasn't rumbled. You would think maybe it would, um, given all the explosions and stuff that have occurred so far. But, uh, yeah, so... I I'm sorry, I talked over that entire intro video. But I think that we're smart enough, we can kind of deduce what happened. Um, he wanted to ride over and save the guy, the save the, the crazy good guy. Uh, the hero guy who's made of a statue over here. And he failed. Okay. So, uh, off to kill these evil dudes. These guys just look evil. I don't know who they are, but I'm gonna kill them. I mean, I guess they were just kind of, like, telling me... Uh, as I was talking over the announcer in the background who they were, but whatever they're they're like uh, Ratchet and Clank's version of the Borg um, So you collect gears in this game. Oh, I, I think I stepped on a fish. Oh, I killed a fish 
There you go. So I guess even the fish are evil. Um, so the gears uh, in this game are kind of like the currency, uh, which makes sense because you have to uh, build stuff. Oh, wait, what did that say? Oh, man. There, there's some kind of like glowing uh, square cube over there, and I want to get it, but I uh, won't let me pick it up. Oh, these are fish that are piloting robots. Well, that's kind of cool. So you kill the robots, and then there's like a little fish in there, and then you can step on him and kill him, and it gives you even more gears. So don't forget to kill... Don't, don't just kill the robo-armor that your enemies are piloting, but don't forget to like desecrate and kill the enemies themselves. This is my inventory or something like that. Oh, I have a gun? Wait, I have a gun? Okay. I, I've just been going at this uh, going at this all melee style. We're totally going to gun it up, though. Uh, let's see if there's anything over this way. No, that's a locked door. Um, this game feels... You know what this game feels like to me? It feels like Pixar. It feels like Pixar made this. You know, like, everything is, like, very, like, clean and polished. And there's lots of, like, interesting cartoony characters. Uh, I don't know if you're evil or not. These guys seem neutral. But uh, in my books, nobody's neutral. Somebody who's neutral is just an enemy that hasn't betrayed me yet. Crap. I wish I wish I knew how to pick up these things. Hold on. Let, let's, let's mess around here for a sec. These have to be worth something. Can you shoot them? Does shooting them do anything? No. It just wastes our ammo. Okay. Well, I'm sure if it's important, it, you know, the game will tell us about it later on. So <laughs> maybe it's health. Oh, maybe it's health. Maybe those things are health. Maybe I'm not injured enough. So I got to get injured. Kill these, uh, kill these strangers that have just not become my enemy yet. Break all these boxes. Every video game hero needs some kind of box to destroy. Mario had the question mark block. Uh, Sonic had, like, 90s desktop computers. Oh, wait, why am I not shooting these guys? Shoot them! Gun them down! Yeah, there we go. Alright, so shooting, shooting, you just kind of, like, stand here and shoot. <laughs> That's kind of cool. Um, I guess this is what a third person shooter. I guess it's considered more of a shooter platformer like it is a shooter But it's not it's more it's more similar to like Mario uh, 64 than it is like a shooter game You know like it's it's like uncharted I would say is like a third person shooter This is a bit more of a platform game where like the shooting is like more incidental To use the meteor pad stand on the pad and press the jump button Okay done. Oh What the heck? Didn't, didn't think that's what was going to happen. Okay, let's shoot this guy in his butt. Menu by holding down the action button. Use the left stick to select your weapon. Oh, interesting. The left stick. A fusion grenade? Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Lobbing grenades at these guys. All right, maybe that's what the, uh, the purple boxes were. They were fusion grenades. Okay. Can I... No, this just rotates my camera. I can't strafe, I guess. Sidestepping is very important in these uh, in these 3D games, but I guess you can't. So this is that's one thing that separates this from a true 3D game, uh, three, a third-person shooter, a first-person shooter, but in third person, from a uh, platformer game, which is you can't strafe sideways. Mario don't strafe. This guy don't strafe. Strafing it does not seem to be possible. Uh, okay, anyway. Um, but yeah, every video game hero needs something to smash. Sonic, it was the computers. Mario's the question mark blocks. Uh, what are what are other things that heroes broke? Yeah, I guess Crash Bandicoot also uh, destroyed just random crates. I think crates are like the lazy man's way out. Oh, those are grenades. Okay, we figured it out. All right, good, good. I I'm glad we figured it out just because I hate when there's things in games that confuse me, which is frequent. Which is frequent. I'm frequently confused by things in games. But I kind of bring it on myself. I mean, if you've watched my channel and if you've watched this video so far, you know, I'm the kind of gamer who likes to... Uh, oh, this is kind of fun. Who likes to skip through instructions and just figure it out for myself. Wee! Well, this is an awesome part. I kind of like this. Reminds me of the minecart level in uh, Donkey Kong Country. Oh, I thought I messed up right there. Oh, the whole building is collapsing around me. Whoa! Man. Yeah, like the animation style so looks like Pixar, it's crazy. Like, it, it feels like this game could have been made by Pixar. It's like the Pixar video games. Um, anyway, yeah, crates are kind of like the lazy man's, the, la the lazy gamer's way out of things to destroy. Crates are just super common, you know? Like, a a every gamer, every video game hero destroys crates at some point. They all dabble in crates. 
Um, and then they grow up and they the real the, the the real ones establish themselves with something super creative. Like I'm trying to think, like kind of it, it's like the blocks that you destroy in video games are kind of as iconic as the character themselves. Like think about Super Mario, right? Like Mario exists in the Mushroom Kingdom. Like if Mario had existed in like a generic boring office where he just broke bland looking crates and fought like really generic looking enemies, we probably wouldn't love Mario. You know, in the same way that like, you know, the Joker probably has elevated Batman to be an even better hero. Like not like Batman's totally awesome. But, like, having an awesome villain kind of, like, makes a hero even better. Like, for video game characters, having awesome levels is kind of, like, what makes what, what makes them awesome. Like, awesome bad guys and awesome awesome crates and power-ups, you know? Awesome crates to destroy. So, uh, Sonic had the computers, which is kind of cool. I mean, Sonic's whole thing was more about going through the loops and going really fast and stuff. Um, but, you know, they... It's not like they just phoned it in. They didn't just have him blowing up uh, random generic-looking crates. I, I, I keep saying generic-looking crates, kind of like pooping on uh, what uh, Ratchet and Crank is doing here. Like, oh man, like they're so lazy crates. But uh, I don't, I don't mean that at all. Like their world is definitely like fleshed out and very creative and so on. I'm just saying that crates are one thing that you see an awful lot in video games as like the generic thing to destroy to get power-ups. I mean, like they even used it in like Half-Life, right? It was. Uh, like, even, even old Gordy Freeman was destroying crates. Can I kill these things or not? He, there, there are evil fish in them. Yeah! Okay, I, I am definitely getting injured, though. Run, run, run! Run! <laughs> okay, hold on. We gotta switch to a grenade, I think? Oh! They're, like, shooting me through the thing. Boom! Okay, I got one. Boom! Got the other. All right. So those grenades are basically how you want to take down uh, those baddies. Pretty sure I got way more injured there than I needed to, to uh, yeah. Um, I like that this level is starting off with this peaceful, serene-looking city just, like, totally getting destroyed. Uh, it, really, it really adds a sense of urgency here to the gameplay. Oh, God, the whole bridge is collapsing behind me. Let's kill this guy here. There's an interesting variety of camera angles, too, uh, which is another thing that you don't see in third-person shooters. Third-person shooters hover close to, like, over the shoulder. Uh, you know, they, they don't, you won't get a weird camera angle like this in, like, Uncharted or something like that. Um, even, like, Resident Evil, I would say. Like, Resident Evil is a great game. I wouldn't even call that game a shooter, really. Like, it has shooting mechanics the same way this game has shooting mechanics. Resident Evil is obviously way more of a puzzle game. Um, and again, going by the fact that, you know, it's like, it, it doesn't, it doesn't kind of, like, hover over your shoulder, you know? It's, it's not like a, it's not a third-person shooter that's, like, there, hovering over your shoulder. Kaboom! Oh, we got both of them. Two for one, and we kill these neutral guys, too. Oh, robots are the enemy. Maybe this is like the AI uprising that Elon Musk is afraid of. It's like, we built a couple of robots. Although, these robots, the true robots, like the real robots, seem to be fine. It's the robots piloted by fish that are evil. So maybe Elon has got it wrong. He is afraid of the robot uprising, but really he should be afraid of the fish uprising for too long. Oh, look at this. Get a close-up of the guy. As another building collapses, and there's... Oh, God. Uh, which way do we want to go? Here, I guess? Oh, my God. And then here, and then here. Oh, this is cool. Oh! <laughs> Almost fell off. Whoa! No! <laughs> oh, left or right? Okay, we want... No, no, center. <laughs> oh, man. I love, I love those, like, rail parts. It's like a bit of, like, Tony Hawk in the game for, like, some random reason. Oh, that guy's, like, hugging a wall or something? I don't know what's going on there. Let's break all this stuff. Get away from me, you stinking fish-piloted robots. I'll kill anything that doesn't breathe air. Freaking fish. Oh, look at those. Those grenade things are, like, phasing out of reality. Um, I feel like the melee is far more effective in this game than the shooting. The shooting is fine, but when you can't strafe... It's like if I want to aim at an enemy, I have to take a step towards him. Like, to aim at this guy, I kind of got to walk towards him, you see? So it's sort of like, boom, yeah, suck it. Um, it's, a, it's a little harder to, like, maintain your distance. So you're constantly moving towards enemies, and then as a result, you might as well just be meleeing them. But, uh, yeah. So, so why are the fish against us? That's the question we got to try and figure out as we play this game. These jumps are amazing, but 
Um, why the fish against us? I guess if you gave any aquatic creature a robotic shell, it would exact revenge on the land dwellers. Um, okay. Interesting. Huh. Okay. I can, I can do this. <laughs> Come on, you stinking fish. Give me a real challenge. Give me a lobster in a robot suit. Oh god, the ground's just being destroyed behind us. Let's leave some of these robots to, to their own fate. See ya! Look, they're falling off into their own doom. They were so, so worried about trying to kill me that they uh, didn't bother to try and save themselves. The fools. Maybe we should switch to our gun here. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah, this is the gun. This is the shooting part. Cool. All right, I'm just going to sh blindly shoot into... I think I blew up the entire building. Tilt the six-axis wireless controller to steer through the traffic. Gotcha. All right. Oh, cool. This is totally like uh, Fifth Element now. Like, didn't uh, Lilu or whatever, like, dive off of the side of a building and have to, like, dive through traffic like this until she fell into Corbin Dallas's taxi cab? And am I just falling to my death? Where do I want to land here? <laughs> it's like I avoided the traffic and then hit a roof at, like, 70, 80 miles per hour at, like, terminal velocity and just died. Wait, he could helicopter? Why didn't he helicopter the whole way? Is he just waiting for the end to, like, show off? I'm away from my post at the Planetary Defense Center. Please enter the number that best describes your emergency. If you are being attacked by radioactive amoeboids, please press one. How about giant robots? That's that's our emergency. Oh, they're targeting my face, too. They, they don't mess around. Oh, no, they're targeting his face. Wait, he's a toaster, and I'm like... Wait, what? what is... what is Ratchet? He's some kind of, like, s weird space raccoon thing. Alright. And off we go! Surfing our way, ra rail, railing our way to uh, victory. Oh god, that definitely hurt. Okay. I'm down to 2 out of 11. What I think is health. I also- oh god! I was looking at the, the experience bar for a second there. I was like, oh look at all the experience I have. And I'm like, oh god, a train! <laughs> um, oh my god. Okay, I just hop around a lot. This does not seem like something you want to train kids to do. Just, by the way, you know, like, this is a kid's game, but uh, you definitely don't want to train kids to, like, dive around trains and stuff. Also, how does he ride a rail up? That part's confusing. But whatever. I like this part where it's sort of like Donkey Kong Country. Um, okay. Oh, I totally got iced. They iced me. Okay, here we go. Oh, jump off of this. Above this. So here's the question. Do I have full health? Or... Oh, I can I can attack on this? I can attack the train? I don't want to find out what happens if I attack the train. <laughs> uh, have they given us full health or are we back to like two hit points? So was it, was it a checkpoint, you know? Or did it like refill us? This tunnel here feels like an amusement park ride. Like I feel like I'm at like Universal Studios or something. Or Canada's Wonderlands? You guys know about Canada's Wonderland? If you've never been to Canada's Wonderland, you should totally check it out. Canada's Wonderland is basically like uh, just a bunch of really fun rides, and it has none of the glitz and glamour of any of the American theme parks. Like, I find that American theme parks have a lot of like production value in like the lines and stuff while you're waiting to get on the ride. They'll have like, you know, little movies playing, and like the line takes place through like different sets and stuff like that. And then you finally get to the ride. And the ride is like the main thing, and that's the super fun part. Canada's Wonderland is just like a bunch of really good rides, and uh, there's just like almost no value in the line. Like the lines are just generic and boring. Um, but if you go before school is out, that's the trick. Go before like public school is out, uh, like a couple weeks before, and like there's no lines. You just get on as many rides as you want, ride it over and over until you feel very safe. If you've never been to Canada's Wonderland, I'm telling you guys, it's near Toronto. Next time you're in Toronto, on your next annual visit, go there. Anyway, we got some weird kind of, like, space fish creature, I assume. Civil Tachyon, crown prince of the Kragmites, conqueror of space and time, and, pending the obliteration of a few insubordinate species, ruler of the universe! <laughs> your name's Percival? <laughs> ruler of the universe, huh? 
See the crown? See the scepter? The giant walking throne? And legion of loyal robotic commandos? Emperor! Commandos? That a treacherous furball like you could... What's this? <laughs> such a primitive robot companion. And your kind used to be such renowned engineers. <laughs> Um, okay. I'd be careful if I were you. He's got Can we skip this? All right. <laughs> I don't know. He did it. He was going to do a thing. And then we were going to get away. So, okay. Dot, dot, dot. We made it out of there somehow. I prefer I prefer this 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 way of watching the cutscenes more because you sort of have to, like, imagine what might have happened. <laughs> I like how my robot is like a little British butler. Oh! <laughs> so cryo sleep gas for me, and then he got punched out. That's that's uh that's good. Um, all right, and then we go off to some interesting mystical plant. Oh wait, are we are we entering a robot's dream? Please tell me we're in a robo dream. That is totally awesome. I want to play as Clank here for a little bit. Let's do it. I think I think we're getting to play as a robot's dream. So Ratchet and Clank, I would say, is one of the series that kind of got away from me, like, in all honesty. Like, I always I always remember hearing about it. Oh, we didn't get to play as a robot's dream, that sucked. Um, I remember, I always remember hearing about it, and I remember it was, like, good and stuff, but, like, I just, I just never played a single Ratchet and Clank game. Like, so this is the first game for the PS3. I guess that means there's PS2 entries? Like, I didn't even know. I kind of, once I sort of saw this game in the book, I'm like, oh, I'll play that this one today I um, well now we're on like a, a dino planet or something and for some reason the dinosaurs have nuts and bolts in them doesn't make a lot of sense but I'm gonna go with it these are I guess robotic dinosaurs it's a robotic dinosaur planet which which actually sounds a little awesome um, but yeah I mean I what you can strafe l2 oh my god okay well I take it back I was complaining about how you couldn't strafe in the first level, and here, lo and behold, you totally can. So anyway, doesn't seem like you really need to, but you can. Uh, maybe I will need to eventually. Do these guys ever die, or do they just keep respawning? And I'll keep killing them as long as you got gears in your belly. I will bludgeon you to death with an axe. That is my promise. Can I go in here? Will this kill me? <laughs> yep. Anyway, uh, what was I saying? Oh yeah, Ratchet and Clank. So apparently, supposedly, there's PS2 entries to this game. Um, and in fact, I think the first Ratchet and Clank is on the PS2. I kind of looked it up um, after I realized that this was not the first game. And uh, the first game, now, the first game, the first Ratchet and Clank is in the Thousand One Games You Just Play Before You Die book. So we will get to it eventually. But, um, I don't know, I just kind of figured... Um, I kind of had this, you know, our, this game already picked out and stuff, and for, like, a game like Ratchet and Clank, where we're probably not going to pay too much attention to the story and just kind of, like, play the game, um, it didn't really feel like that essential to play them in any specific order, so. Sometimes I like playing games, like, in order, you know, like, I like playing the first, first game in a series before the second and third and stuff, but other times, sometimes it's fun to play, like, one of the later series where the game's a little more polished, and then eventually go back to the first one, kind of see, like, where did it all start, and see, like, what mechanics did they kind of not have back then, and, like, what, what must have been added in the PS3 edition and stuff, so, yeah. Um, hmm. This looks like a hole I can enter, but I guess I clearly can't. So we kind of have to go across here somehow. That's never going to happen. Oh, so we're going to go down here, I guess. Okay, smash all these things. Get away from me, baby dino thingy. I thought these were like dinosaurs, but now I'm kind of thinking they look like slugs or something. I guess we'll go up like this. Oh, you can double jump. Oh, and you can then float. Gotcha. I was going to say, like, how do you make that gap? But then I just remembered from the PS4 version that I played that you totally can double jump. Slam this guy in his butt. Start shooting these things. This thing wants, like, a melee fight. We're pulling, like, an Indiana Jones. We just, like, pull our gun out of our holster and we just sigh and shoot it. Because we, like, can't be bothered to melee fight it. One of the best scenes ever, I would say, in, uh, in movies. Where Indy just decides to, like, straight up shoot that guy. We'll shoot this guy, too. Right in his stinking worm tail. Whatever the heck he is. Some kind of weird dino worm thingy. Like, they're like centipedes now, these things. 
Oh, who spit on me? Because you're going to get it. You're going to get it. Okay, you know what? You're going to get a grenade. Go away. I'm just like whipping grenades of wildlife now. I am totally not on the... I'm totally not a conservationist. Ratchet here is all about desecrating nature if it suits his needs. If there's if there be gears in it, I be killing it. That's his sort of credo in life. If something has gears, he will bludgeon it to death. <laughs> For those sweet, sweet gears, man. He's like a gear junkie. What do the gears even do? I have 19,000 of them. 19,000 nuts and bolts. What are you collecting them for, man? It's not like you can build a robot out of nuts and bolts. You can't just have, like, nothing, but you need, like, sheet metal, and you need some hydraulics, and some silicon in there at some point. You can't just literally, like, stack a thousand nuts together and be like, ah, oh, finally, an awesome robot. It would just be a pile of nuts, and it would do nothing. <laughs> do absolutely nothing. I guess you could create a very intricate set of... Maybe, maybe if, if he's getting gears too, maybe you could create an intricate enough set of gears that you could create a mechanical brain of some kind. Oh, can you wall jump? Yeah, you can. Ooh, yeah, there you go. All right. We're figuring stuff out. It doesn't have to tell us everything. We have enough video game, uh, video game history in us that we can figure out some rather obvious game mechanics to glide, jump, and then hold X. Oh, I did jump. <laughs> I was holding X. Oh my god! Oh, I died! <laughs> I was holding X, but he didn't glide for like the long... Here, look, watch. Watch what happens. You hold X, it just looks like you're free-falling, and then he starts gliding way down here. Oh, and he's dead! Okay, so I guess I gotta, like, double jump? Okay, so let's do this. Double jump, and then... Okay. So if you just jump and hold X, that is, like, a terrible way to do it. So you need to double jump, man, the double jump. Look how easy it was with the double jump. Just jumping and holding X did not do it. All right, come here, you stinking thing. Punch you in the butt. The comet strike. Is the comet strike. Reach distant enemies and bolts. Simply crouch. crouch. Wait, how do you crouch? Crouching was an option? Hold on, that looks. That shoots. And then square. Oh! Huh. Oh, get out of here. So you can crouch. But wait, why would I do this as opposed to just doing this? <laughs> like, they're, they're like, oh, if you crouch, you can throw your wrench. It's like, oh, sweet. It's like, or I could literally just use a gun. I do have the capacity to use weapons. So, I don't know. Whatever. Oh, look at all these guys. Oh, my God. Okay, hold on. We're switching to grenades. And then we're going to rotate at them. And then we're gonna start whipping grenades at them, man. When when a when a caterpillar, or whatever the heck, a centipede can withstand one whole grenade, that is one tough vermin, man. Okay, we killed them all yet. Absorb all their power. Eventually, I guess these nuts and stuff are worth something, but I don't know. It's not. It's definitely not like coins. Like Mario knew when to spend his money. You give him a hundred coins, and he is off to the one-up bank. Find extra lives. Not this guy. Okay, here we go. Ooh, look, a question mark block. Straight out of Mario. You will temporarily earn more bolts and meritanium. Okay. So now we earn even more nuts and bolts for some reason. For whatever purpose they will eventually serve. I hope we encounter a planet where they're like, they're totally on like a nuts and bolts, you know, currency. Like that's their gold standard. Kill all these little guys. Boom, boom, boom. And these guys, too. I gotta feel like I got a down... I feel like I got a downgrade in the universe. I went from fighting, like, some kind of, like, evil mastermind to just fighting generic wildlife. You know, like, a, a guy who was trying to take over all of space and time. That's a noble cause, to kill someone like that. But to just kill... Just be running around killing, like, slugs and stuff? I don't know, man. I don't know. Oh, my God. What is this thing? Oh, it's, it's the boss. Okay, so we gotta switch to grenades, I assume. Grenades, there we go. And, okay. So these things, oh, that gives me like, uh, grenade and gun power-ups. Can we, oh, get out of the water. Oh, you can jump out of that stuff. You don't just have to like, die. Okay. 
There we go. There we go. There we go. There we go. Now we're getting into it. We're grenading, we're grenading the crap out of his gut. He's gonna have indigestion problems. In addition to being dead. In addition to being dead. Okay, let's switch to our gun. There we go. Just continue to shoot him in the guts. This is like the most ineffective boss ever. He's like, my plan is to kind of hover around him until eventually he gets me. <laughs> Sucker! You have acquired Raritanium. This valuable resource can be used to upgrade your weapons. Simply go to a weapons huh. vendor and select the upgrade weapons option. You have collected a Leviathan soul. These are valuable in the Polaris galaxy and can be traded for bolts. Wait, now I'm in the soul collecting business? So I not only... Oh, look, a spaceport. I not only got a, uh... Got some, like, raritanium so I could, like, upgrade. Okay, what is that guy? It's like a saucy pirate, saucy robot pirate. I not only got raritanium to upgrade my weapons, but I'm also now dealing in the soul of monsters that I kill. And, uh, and I can kill randos still. I'm definitely not a hero. I'm definitely not a hero, because I'm killing civilians. Uh, let's upgrade our weapon. So we got, we can upgrade our combustor. Blast your opponents into oblivion with high velocity plasma balls. Or I can upgrade, uh, my grenades. I have 168. So, hmm. Well, I can only upgrade my grenades once. But I could upgrade my gun multiple times. So let's go with the gun. Um, longer range. Oh, that sucks. Faster shooting. Faster shooting. Kind of interesting how there's, like, upgrade paths. I kind of, like, really like that, actually. Earn upgrades, increase weapon damage. So increased range is the only thing we can get right now, which kind of sucks. Like, who really cares about that? Although, I guess we could build, like, a sniper class. Okay, hold on. Let's go back. What happens for upgrading gr the grenade? Increased weapon ammo. Eh, What's this one? Increase your weapon's damage. Increases the bolts earned. Uh, I don't know. You know what? The grenade does a lot of damage. Let's go ahead and upgrade to a sniper class. So we'll go with longer range. Then we'll go with faster shooting. And then, oh man. I want, I want to go. Oh, we could. We, oh, this is interesting. You could either become like a, like a quick draw player. We could like shoot really, really fast. Or you could become like a sniper. We can shoot really, really far. That is cool. Man, now I want more rare titanium. It's awesome. Buy ammo. Why would I want? <laughs> I have twenty six thousand bolts and like spending four hundred on ammo. I'm like, eh, eh. I mean, there's just ammo everywhere. Plus, I'm usually I'm still in the bludgeoning people to death phase. So I don't really need uh need. Oh my god, there's different weapons. The plasma beasts. These synthetic bodyguards will lay dormant until enemies move in and strike with lethal lethal efficiency. Okay sold or the tornado launcher i guess you know so the whole thing with ratchet and clank is it has a whole bunch of like different crazy weapons so control your own cataclysmic tornadoes interesting all right let's buy a plasma beast because i don't know if we'll how much money we're gonna get if we're gonna have a lot of chances to buy too many different weapons but oh my god they look like jack skellington's face interesting okay well we, we'll definitely wait until we see some enemies and use it on the enemies but oh wait hold on where's my blaster do i shoot faster oops i just killed that guy i guess i shoot a little faster it's not like that noticeable though to be honest oh we're just killing guys everywhere is there like no penalty for killing the random just inhabitants of this universe everyone's just okay with it my guy yeah, he's just butchering the uh butchering the droids of the spaceport it's all good Except this guy. Oh, there we go. That guy, that guy wanted to live. Unfortunately, I wanted to kill. Don't you lay this on me, you worthless sack of Kirchu sweat. You oh my god. Watch the jail gate. Ah, blame the parrot. Always blame the parrot. Is everything all right, sir? Ah, Imperial spies. Hide their bodies. Ah! Oh, well, excuse my friend. We're just a couple of humble smugglers, unfairly hunted and persecuted wherever we go. Yep. I thought he was a robot, but I guess he's like a snake person. Only implant. They must be uh, looking for someone. Well, we're kind of stranded ourselves. Our ship crashed back there. And oh, clear now. Sell their kidneys. Stranded, hmm? 
Well, I'll tell you what, pal. We're gonna make you a deal. You get the gel pumps working, and we'll, uh, procure a vessel for you. Yeah, this guy seems trustworthy. Oh, he just gave me a gun? Okay. I'll take it, though. The heck kind of gun is this? The gelat... Gel... God, gel... Gelanitor. The gelanitor. I want to say the gelatinator, but that was totally not right. <coughs> gelanitor. Okay, whatever. Um, I guess one of the features of the PS2 era uh, Ratchet and Clank, Clank, Clank games. Oh my god. Wait. Fill up gelanator. <laughs> I can't even say it. Alright, there we go. <clears throat> Suck all the plasma juice. Let's go ahead and shoot stuff. Oh, interesting. Oh, and now I can bounce? Oh! Huh. Cool. Neat. Yeah, so the Ratchet and Clank games are all about sort of creating weapons. And, or, or having, like, very interesting weapons. I guess one of the features of the PS2 era Ratchet and Clanks is that... Oh, God, that's an explosion. Is that I think on one of the games, you could use a memory card from one of the previous games... And it would unlock the weapons from that previous game, uh, which is kind of cool. Like, so I think it was in number two. I could be mistaken here. Oh, these guys don't die. <laughs> they also seem not, not to want to harm me, so I guess I should start stop trying to kill them. But I think it's like number two or something like that, where um, you can plug in a memory card that has a save game from Ration Clank 1, and the weapons from number one will like unlock in two, which is kind of of cool actually oh they eat the they eat the stuff gotcha so we definitely got to kill these guys probably with grenades let's try this all right you eat my gel i blow you up oh no okay that doesn't kill them all right well back to this thing bloop do i have ammo for this thing i don't even know Build this thing up really big. And get up there. There we go. Okay. Um, now that kind of feature of like plugging a memory card in from a previous game to like unlock stuff. I've heard about that in a couple of games. I mean, I guess obviously you're not gonna see that in a game like uh like Ratchet and Clank here for the PS3. Because as best I know, the PS3 like never had uh, never really had save games. Or, not save games, memory cards, memory cards. Right, like, the PS3 always had a physical hard drive, if I'm not mistaken. There was never such a thing as a, uh... Oh, look at this stuff. Oh, it's the rare stuff that lets me upgrade. Sweet! Yeah, the PS3 never had a, uh... Oh my god, that was a mistake. Never had a memory card. If memory serves. I think the Xbox 360 might have had memory cards, if I'm not crazy maybe i'm crazy so the ps3 i think always had a hard drive built in i think the xbox 360 there definitely were models of it without a hard drive and you would have to essentially um like not be able to save your game basically okay now where do we want to go here we definitely want to go up but these guys are just going to eat anything that we drop so we kind of like have to like wait for them to like go away or like be very quick about it yeah, get out of here. All right. Oh, look at all these guys. They were just sleeping, waiting for us. They're like the grunts from Halo. They're just taking a quick power nap. Is no one, is no one at the spaceport, like, worried that the uh, spaceport is infested by all these, like, crazy, like, primitive monsters? I mean, the spaceport itself was guarded by some kind of, like, giant monster whose soul has value. <laughs> Not only did I kill it and take its soul... There's some, like some weird monster guarding the spaceport. But the soul is also some kind of currency. So, yeah, no, nobody was really phased by that. They're like, yeah, yeah, it has currency. Oh, my God, this is so cool. Oh, my God, now what? Oh, whoa, that, that was cool. Just, like, randomly, gravity got warped. I dig that. Just going to turn this thing until it feels right. Gelatonium pump restored. Yep. Plant operating at 50% efficiency. 50% efficiency. Let's try and go over here and see what we got. Any secrets? Any fun secrets here? Nothing? Okay. Well, I don't know what that was about, but... Uh, I learned that you can grab onto uh, 
grab onto something on the wall there. I think it was those things right there, you see? I grabbed onto one of those. So I learned you can. And I also learned about this, which is totally awesome. <laughs> cool mechanics in this. So I wonder, like, how, how Naughty Dog feels about Ratchet and Clank using their game engine. So I know Naughty Dog had, like, a really close relationship with Sony for a number of years, and I think they still do. Um, because I always assumed, I always just assumed that this game was made by Naughty Dog. You know, again, like, not only did I confuse this game with Jack and Daxter a lot, but I just assumed that this was a Naughty Dog game, because it feels so Naughty Dog. But I guess it's by Insomniac Games, which off the top of my head, I don't know what else they've created. But I'm sure plenty of good stuff. But it's... Oh, God! Jump! Whoa. Okay. Again... Jump! Okay, we don't, we're not going high enough. So kind of got to, like, shoot a couple. Maybe I could do this. Okay, hold on. Jump! Jump! Go! Go! Get up there! <laughs> yeah. Um, I think my biggest exposure to Jack and Daxter here before this game was in uh, PlayStation All-Stars. You guys remember that? It was like this... PlayStation All-Stars was basically like Sony's attempt to come up with an answer to uh, Super Smash Brothers. And uh, it, uh, it, you know, was like mildly successful, I'd say. Like, it, it actually wasn't that bad of a game, but it actually is not like that great of a game. It has like an interesting weird mechanic. So like in, in PlayStation All-Stars, it's just totally same idea as Smash Brothers. You have all these characters from iconic Sony uh, franchises like, uh, you know, you had like the guy from uh, Killzone and from Twisted Metal and you had like Parappa and stuff like that. And you had Jack and Daxter and Ratchet and Clank and Nathan Drake and they were all like fighting just like in Smash Brothers. But the thing that kind of made it weird is that you could beat each other up until the cows come home and nobody would die. So no characters took damage. The way you killed people is after you beat people up enough, up enough, you'd build up a power meter. Then you could activate like a ultimate move. And it didn't matter if you spent the entire game beating up a guy on the left side of the screen. If you, Once your meter was charged, you could walk over to the right side of the screen, use a power move, and kill a guy on the right side of the screen. You know what I mean? So it's sort of like... I think the reason the game didn't really do very well is like that mechanic, they tried to do that to separate it from place from uh, Super Smash Brothers, but it actually is not that great of a mechanic because it's kind of frustrating. Uh, one thing that was super fun about PlayStation All-Stars is like frustrating your friends where like you can totally like spend the whole game beating one person up and then walk across the other side of the screen and then do a finishing move on a guy who has been like owning everyone and then you could kill him. So like... <laughs> It, it was just like, oh, it was a weird mechanic. A weird mechanic. Hey, we restored all the gelatin, and the spaceport is now hopping with commerce and activity. Ooh, and look at that, a golden screw. We definitely want that. We want all the screws we can get. See that smuggler about the ride, he promised. Oh, we'll see him about a ride, all right, old man. Or little robot. I guess Clank just, like, spends his time, like, hanging onto my back. Hoping I go where he wants to go. Right, we're going to try and uh, go over here, I guess. All right. Don't eat my goo. Little things. Whatever the hell you are. Go, 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 go. There we go. Um, so, yeah. PlayStation All-Stars. Interesting idea for game. But I think just ultimately, like, you know, it, it's... Eh, they tried to make it too different, and then they end up making it worse than Smash Brothers. If they had just literally made a Smash Brothers clone, I think it would have done a little bit better. Because it actually didn't have bad mechanics. And it had, like, combos and stuff, which were kind of cool. Um, oh, drain the gelatinator. Oh man, like, I'm not allowed to walk around with this thing? What a tease. They're like, hey, here's this awesome new gun. And by the way, you'll never get to use it again. You had your shot. Don't be a bitch about it. Give us the gel back and get the hell out. All right, so much, so much for having an awesome new gun, eh? I guess they do that so you can't like cheese levels by being able to just place jumpy platforms wherever you want. Hey, what's the haps there, slick? <laughs> what? The are special combat items, very handy in a pinch. Come on, step into our office and take a look. See. Okay, shop for devices. Pretty general, but I'll see what you got. The Groovatron. Mesmerize your enemies with this dance-inducing disco ball. 
As a leech bomb, low on nanotech, throw one of these and absorb the health of your enemies. Huh. All right, I'll bite. I, I want to see I want to see these things in action. We'll buy these two. I'm spending all the cash because you can't take it with you guys. And soon enough, I think I think this video is starting to get a little long, so we'll we'll wrap it up soon enough. But before we do, where was that golden nut? It's like around here somewhere. Look at all these things. Like, how do I get up there? Well, I want to go up to a high place. Okay, there's the place. There's the place, there's the place, there's the place. Okay, so I figured out where to go. There's some moving platforms that start over here and go all the way around the whole level. I don't know if you guys noticed it, but it starts right over here. Uh, or over here, I guess. Hold on. Oh, look, there's a whole other, like, underground, or, like, wild to explore. We definitely want to get on the ship, though. We want to see, like, another planet here. We're going to get all the nuts and bolts we can along the way. Even though, like, I feel like I might stop playing this game soon, like wrap up the video, I still can't help but collect all these like nuts and bolts. Like, you can't just leave power-ups uncollected. That's not how video games work, man. If there are power-ups, you gotta get them. Were you guys one of the players who would like collect every single coin in Mario, or would you just like, uh, like run past them? I feel like uh, sometimes those people who had to collect like every coin in Mario were kind of annoying. It's like, come on, man, just pass the level. It's like, no, I got to get this, like, one coin. And they're, like, bouncing around forever. You're like, just go. Who cares? It's only one coin. They, like, just would not give up over that, like, one coin. Um, you couldn't do that in Sonic, by the way. Like, you couldn't you couldn't be a completionist and try and collect every uh, every coin in Sonic the Hedgehog. It just, it just wouldn't work. Because, uh, well, first of all, in Sonic, they're rings and not coins. But second of all... Um, Sonic levels are so non-linear and so branching that there's no way you could get every ring. I mean, okay, as I say that, I'm sure somebody in the comments is going to be like, actually, if you check out this speedrunner, blah, 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 okay. Yeah. But I'm talking about just like a normal player. Like, I'm sure it is probably possible to get all the rings um, in the entire game, but for like an average player just kind of like trying to play through the level and not die, um, there definitely does seem to be parts of the game where you just can't... Uh, you just can't get any of the, uh, oh, there's a golden nut. We did it. You just can't get, uh, all the rings. Anyway, we got the nut. Yeah. He's like one big giant golden nut coming up, fellas. And we'll get all this stuff. Oh, it just, again, it just feels so good to get that stuff. And look at this. There's like a, a thingy here. How do I get on this? Oh, maybe I just jump. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> I thought I had to grab the, uh, orb. We'll have this thing blow up. Ow, ow. Okay, I was trying to do that, uh, trying to have the, the explosive one fall down. Oh, he wants to see. Oh, armor. So let's shop some armor, man. I like these, like, little frog dudes who just, like, live in a live in a ball or whatever. Let's see if he'll go back in. Yeah, look. He just, like, lives in a little ball, and then he, like, pops out when the time is right. Um, Black Star Armor. Huh. Absorbs 25% of all damage. Doesn't seem worth it for the amount of money you're spending. Tachyon Appreciation Day will be extended infinity days plus one. <laughs> Tachyon Appreciation Day will be extended infinity days plus one. A little time travel joke for you guys. Let's speak to the smuggler. This is basically the Han Solo of the Ratchet and Clank universe. I'm really proud of myself that I haven't accidentally called them Jack and Daxter this entire video. At least I don't think I have. Um, where the heck are we? What are Leviathan souls? Look here. There are creatures out there. Now, the ones of the larger variety carry in each of them a Leviathan soul. Now, I'll kill them. I'll collect them. And then sell them. That sounds super dark. To, like, kill, go around killing creatures for their souls because, uh, because it's worth money. Okay, let's, tr let's, let's get into the soul trading business, guys. We're, we're literally like Satan himself. Uh, okay, how about that ride? All as far as Stratus City. How'd that be? Well, since that's the only option, let's do it, I guess. You have one option. I can go here. How does that sound? Yeah, all right. Do I have any other choice? And off we go to the next part of the crazy, crazy Ratchet and Clank adventure. Into... I hope that was intentional. <laughs> Either I intentionally went into warp or I got sucked into some kind of, like, space wormhole. And here we are, 
in Stratus City. And we're gonna skip this cutscene. Oh yeah, we just <laughs> he he just totally like jettisoned us out of his uh out of his cab, eh? Uh well I'm sure like enemies attacked or something, we had no choice but to dive out. But yeah, so this part you don't control with the analog stick, you control by moving the controller around. Which is fine actually, like I don't mind it. But I said this before, you know, like I give the Wii a hard time for this, so like I gotta be fair and do the same thing for Sony, like it's just a gimmick, you know? Like, there's absolutely no reason they couldn't have had that be an analog stick part. There's no reason why it wouldn't have worked as an analog stick controller. So it is kind of a gimmick to just go ahead and be like, Oh, by the way, you've got to, uh, like, rotate your controller. It's like, yeah, cool, you got motion sensors. You got a gyroscope in your in your game controller. We get it. Um, huzz huzzah. <laughs> uh, like, I can't think of... So in the same way that like for the Wii, it's hard to imagine, um, it's hard to imagine like any case where like the motion controls are more precise than a controller. Um, in the same way, like I can't think of too many like PlayStation 3 games that use the six axis control and that is better than if they had just gone ahead and allowed you to use the analog stick. Like I just, I can't think of a case where, where the six axis control is the superior control scheme is all I'm saying. It's fine to have it occasionally mixed in like that. It's pretty harmless in this game. But at the same time, like, I don't think it necessarily enhances the game. You know what I mean? <laughs> there we go. Those shields, I guess, aren't grenade-proof, eh, boys? I like killing these guys and going and squashing them as they, like, just, just, like, suffocate slowly. Or squish them, step on them. Oh! The heck is that thing? Can I kill it? Is it grenade-proof? Oh, it totally is. Ow, ow. How about I just sneak by ya? <laughs> I don't know if that's what I was supposed to do or what, but... Oh, what the heck? Are you, did you see that? <laughs> I got the power up and then that thing walked in off screen and literally butchered my face to flog enemies with the Ravenger shock. What? Oh, interesting. Oh, interesting. Okay, there's a power that I didn't know I had, and I like it. I like feeling powerful. Smiting my enemies with the power of electricity, boys. It's actually super convenient. Like a generic stun. Oh, they killed me again. What? How much life do I have? I didn't realize that I was so low on health. Wait, when I use this, does it hurt me? Okay, I don't know what the heck's happening there. Uh, let's go ahead and kill them with grenades, though. Because uh, the, as cool as it is to, like, shock a big group of enemies, I feel like that's, like, a panic tactic. What the hell is this? It's like an infinity gauntlet. Your weapon has upgraded. Weapons upgrade automatically huh. as they are used. This increases their damage and adds new modifications. Okay. So our weapon just upgraded randomly. It looked like uh, the infinity gauntlet showed up briefly. That's totally cool by me. Shock Ravenger Cell. Cool. Oh, these guys. Wait. Oh, wait, don't grenade them. Where's the... Shock Ravenger. Oh, it has it has ammo. Oh, it's like a gun. Okay. So I can... Oh, gotcha. Oh, wait. That's the thing I picked up before I got shot in the face. So I didn't have this initially. Okay. Let's try going down here this time, see what we got. Shop for devices. Oh, we need to start using some of our crazy devices. Okay, hold on. What, what crazy devices do we have? The leech bomb. We're totally using the Groovatron. We just need we just need the right excuse to use the Groovatron. Uh, I feel like I've unlocked like a lot of the weapons so far. Oh, well, I guess there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's like ten weapons I haven't gotten so far. So more that I haven't seen than I have. And I'm sure every weapon gets an upgrade, and then like different things happen. Okay. Let's see about killing this guy here. Oh, wait, let's kill him with this. Use a device against the Psycho Cannon. Let's try shooting him with a gun. How does that work? There we go. Ooh, but he gave the good stuff. I will take it. I don't mind enemies being tough if they give up the goods when they die. Okay, let's get to our... We want to see them dance. The Groovatron. Time to get groovy, everybody. 
Time to get groovy forever. If I see enemies, any enemies, here we go. There you go, get groovy, guys. <laughs> and while I get groovy, I'm just gonna gun you to death. They're all dancing. Even the guy in the ball, I think, is getting his dance on. That's that's pretty funny. The Groovatron. There we go. We kill that guy too. Huh, cool. Uh, what was the other thing we got? A leech bomb. I feel like the leech bomb is less interesting. It just like gives you health. It, like drains drains gets more into the soul trade. Drains the soul of the enemies. Gives you health. Well, we'll use one anyway. Why not? So. Yeah, lots of cool gadgets in this game. I mean, again, the Ratchet and Clank series is known for having cool gadgets. I think it even has a gravity gun at some point. Let's try using this thing. Boom! Give me your life force. Oh, it didn't kill them, though. It just, like, revealed life from them. Let's make them dance again. Yeah! I want to dance, too. Yeah! We're all friends now, man! The power of music compels us. You dudes are all right. You take care of yourselves. See ya. Oh, what's up, Brosif? You want some? Thought we were friends, man. But I guess I'll leave you with a parting gift. A grenade. I'll kill y'all, in fact. I'm not gonna leave any witnesses. Hey, oh, huh, huh, boom. <laughs> oh, two guys survived. No way, man. No way. Alright, let's get our let's get our electric uh, electric baton here. Boom! Oh, that just blew him up. Cool. Um, let's go ahead and shock some of these guys over here, too. Boom! Oh, it's like an electric whip! So you don't have to be close. I thought it was like a melee thing, and I was like trying to get close to guys. Oh, th these guys... Gun! We'll shoot this guy, and we'll shoot this guy. Boom! See, here's where strafing comes in handy, when you're fighting, like, ranged enemies. Well, anyway, this video has kind of gone on and on, and... We probably need to wrap it up at some point. I mean, we definitely, you know... For these longer games, again, I've said this multiple times, but there's no way we're going to beat this. Um, you know, the whole point of my series is to try out every game in the book, a thousand one video games you just play before you die. And I feel like we have tried this game sufficiently to get a fair sense of what it's about. In fact, I feel oh, that box is just hovering there. I feel like we've actually played more of this game than we did of Jack and Daxter almost. Like I have a better sense of what this game is about than what Jack and Daxter is was about. Uh, which is funny considering Jack and Daxter was actually made by Naughty Dog, whereas this game was just another company that used Naughty Dog's uh, engine. So, I still wonder what Naughty Dog thinks. I'm sure they're fine with it, but still, like, if I made a, uh, an awesome game and then uh, another company came and then used my game engine to make a game as awesome or maybe even awesomer, I don't know, like, would I be totally okay with it? Maybe I'd be a little jealous. I don't know. By the way, I think I'm stuck randomly what a great place to end the video i oh, know wait i can climb these things i guess okay um do i shoot that thing useful tool for traversing large gaps jump towards the versa target then press and hold the fire button to swing oh hello oh yeah cool all right so there's uh there's some more fun features one last fun feature for the road that's actually kind of cool so we have like a grapple and stuff too. Where am I supposed to go now? Oh, I gotta grab onto that thing. Oh my god. Yes, please! Oh no! <laughs> I got the timing way off. <sighs> Wait, doesn't he have propeller blades on his back? Hold on, we, we totally got a propeller onto... Oops, damn it. We, we totally gotta get onto that, uh, that van before we like totally wrap things up. But anyway, this game is one of the games in the book. A thousand one video games just play before you die. And as I just said... You know, I'm on the quest to try every game in that book. Um, in terms of thinking about this game, I think that this is, like, a pretty dang fun game. I think, you know, as far as, like, 3D platformers go, I totally see why people like the, damn it, like the Ratchet and Clank series. It has some fun melee activity. It has fun shooting. It has really neat gadgets and levels. It is, you know, gravity-bending mechanics, and you can double jump and float, and uh, there's comedy. You know, it feels... It feels like it was made by Pixar. The characters all look kind of cool. The environments are cool. Like, this is just, like, a solid a solid game, you know? Like, And it's hard to say anything particularly negative about it. Um, I definitely think, though, like, personally, as I say, I never got into Ratchet and Clank, and I knew this game was here, and I kind of knew it would be like this. Like, I didn't expect it would be a bad game. thought it would be a perfectly great game. But that said, like, 
this kind of game I think is neat as it is. Maybe I think when I was younger I would have like been more interested to spend the time to play it. But I think nowadays like I'm just not super into this kind of game. And it's nothing against the game, you know, the game's not good enough or something like that. It's just more that I think like I'm more interested in just like other kinds of of uh, other kinds of games. So, you know, kind of like thinking in those terms. I don't know if I would say that this is a game that, that anyone must play before they die. You know, like I think your, your, your gaming life would be complete. I think there's more iconic games to play, like classically iconic. But if you're looking for like a slightly more modern game, a modern franchise, then definitely I would say, okay, well then this is probably a must play because it is so solid on so many different fronts. And it is very, you know, like nostalgic. Like a lot of people grew up playing this grew up with like the PS2 or PS3 being like their console from when they were a kid. And so then I could see this being like, yeah, this is like totally a nostalgic game for them. So like at the end of the day, oh, and my gun upgraded too randomly. I love how you just get like this infinity stone, like sudden, sudden like hard cut to like see your weapon upgrading. That's kind of cool. Um, yeah, so there's a lot of good things about this game. I think whether it's a must play kind of depends on what era of games you grew up with. You know, if like Spyro the Dragon was like a game you grew up with as a kid. Spoilers, it wasn't when I was a kid. I played like Mario and Super Nintendo. But if you played Spyro the Dragon, then you know, this might be like a game that's like a game series is like totally up your alley because it kind of fits with kind of like what your idea of nostalgia is. So, um, yeah, those are my thoughts. Uh, take it or leave it for what it is. What do you guys think, though? Is this is Ratchet and Clank uh, future? What, oh god, hold on. What's the name of this game? Ratchet and Clank Future colon Tools of Destruction. Is that a must play in your opinion? Or how about just any Ratchet and Clank game? We are going to play the first one eventually. So we'll come back to this idea of like, is this a must play? But uh, how about just any Ratchet and Clank? Are these must play games for you? What do you guys think? Uh, let me know in the comments down below. And maybe if you did grow up playing Ratchet and Clank, you know, what, 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 what made the game awesome for you? Like, what really made you kind of like, oops, oh god, I did not mean to do that. <laughs> I meant to press the other button. What made these games awesome for you when you were growing up? Let me know in the comments down below. And uh, as always, whether or not you agree with my assessment of this game, or whether or not you've enjoyed the game itself, hopefully I have made today entertaining for you. If I have, then my mission is complete. And I can die a happy man. And uh, if I have, you should also remember to like the video to show me that you, uh, you had fun today. Because isn't that what it's all about? Um, other than that, you guys all take care of yourselves. And uh, we will see you soon with yet another game in the ongoing quest to play through the book. Thousand One Games is played before you die. So uh, until then, guys. Peace.